In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the time series database option that exists for InfoWorks ICM and InfoWorks ICM Live. The time series database supports two primary data types. Scalar data, which is typically point data, so inflows to certain points in the network, or a tidal boundary that's applying at an outfall, or perhaps individual rain gauges that are located at specific points around a network catchment. The second type of data is spatial data, and this is data that's typically recorded for rainfall via a series of radar stations where individual cells are created across the catchment uh, recording the rainfall in those particular cells. This tutorial is going to talk about spatial data and the importation of that data into a time series database and subsequent use as part of a simulation in either InfoWorks ICM or InfoWorks ICM Live. Spatial rainfall data um, comes in many different formats, but the format that we're going to uh, show in this particular example is Nimrod data. Let's start by having a look at our catchment. It's uh, a reasonable size catchment uh, containing both 1D and 2D elements, and we are going to use um, spatially varying rainfall uh, across the catchment to land on the uh, catchment areas themselves and produce runoff and subsequent uh, hydraulic uh, behavior within the network as a whole. The time series database option um, exists in the InfoWorks ICM suite uh, as an add-on to InfoWorks ICM. Uh, it's also a standard option in ICM Live. So let's start by looking at one of these spatial databases for InfoWorks ICM. So we're going to create a new spatial database, a new spatial time series database. So you can see the option that's here. And um, I'm going to uh, give it a name, uh, which we can see there appeared in the tree. Now, as I said, the uh, spatial time series database um, is used typically for uh, data streams uh, and you can see in this particular case we support a number of different formats uh, which are um, some of which are specific to uh, particular regions of the world others of which are generic and apply in any territory uh, we're going to have a look at the use of nimrod spatial data which is available from the uk's met office uh, and we're going to look at how that can be imported into our spatial time series database and then used in a simulation. So the first thing we need to do is to uh, give the uh, data stream a name. And as it's Nimrod data, I'm going to use the name Nimrod. Specify that it's observed data that we are recording. And then we simply need to pick up um, the um, subdirectory where all our data is um, landing. Now this might be uh, um, updated on a very regular basis if there is a constant feed from the Met Office. New um, data will appear in terms of recordings made over the last hour or the last 15 minutes. Um, and the time series database is able to look and pick up more recent data as it becomes available. But in this particular case, um, I've got the data stored on my uh, computer here. So we just need to go pick up the uh, time series data and all we need to do is really just pick up the data for just one of the cells in the subdirectory. And once we've done that, um, the software is able to ascertain the directory and will pick up all of the other cells that it needs as well. We're able to convert the projection of the data. If the model is in one projection and the uh, time series data is appearing in a different projection, then we can uh, do that. Um, we also, um, it would be a useful exercise to crop the boundary of all of the radar data we have to uh, the area of the model that we're interested in. Otherwise, we could have an enormous amount of data coming into our time series database, most of which would be redundant um, because it's outside the area of interest. So in this particular case, the software has looked at the coordinates of the view space of our geo plan, and it has told us that it will crop any uh, uh, rainfall data that it finds uh, that falls outside of that view space, which is absolutely fine. That's what we want it to do. So the uh, Dialog then uh, changes and we get to see that first cell that I picked when I picked up that one file from the data set. But as you saw when I uh, picked on that one um, data cell, there were lots and lots of other data cells as well. So I can now ask the um, time series database to go off and pick up all of the other data so that we are completely up to date with the series in that directory. If it was polling an FTP site where the FTP site was constantly updated, then it would simply be able to go to the FTP server and gain the latest information. 
Now this prospect of uh, going off and getting the latest data is done as a job, so it's a bit like a simulation job. So you can see that we've told the software to go off and to load all the data uh, from that external source and it's now completely up to date and we can see that the very latest datum, data item we have uh, relates to the 25th of December uh, in that series. We can look at uh, a graph and uh, again this is just for that top cell so this is that last value we can see the rainfall that was appearing in that last cell that we have there. Once that uh, information is complete um, we're then in a position to actually use the data for our um, hydraulic simulations. So let's have a look at how that uh, operation would be performed. Here's the uh, schedule dialog and you can see the uh, name of the network and here we tick the box to say that we're using the time series database and then we have dropped our spatial time series database into that run dialog box. We specified the um, name of our uh, or run parameters for our simulation, the starting date and the duration. In this case we're going to simulate for one day. There's a box that's available underneath the um, time series database um, drop zone and that allows us to confirm the data that is being attached by this particular time series. Um, and we can see the last time that it checked um, for the data was uh, stamped here and this is in fact the database that it's found. It's found some Nimrod data. By ticking this particular box at the bottom of the dialog we can make sure that the software goes off and checks the file server for newer items of Nimrod data before it actually does a new simulation. So it can guarantee that for every new simulation it is using the very latest um, spatially varying radar data. The simulation then um, is run in the normal way. If we then have a look at the results that uh, exist, obviously this is a big model and it's 2D, so rather than uh, run it as part of this tutorial I'm going to show you the results of a run that uh, was done a little bit earlier. So here is exactly the same network, but you'll notice in this occasion now we've got some grid cells that have appeared. And they are there because we used the simulation with the spatially varying time series data. And each one of those cells represents one of the cells from the radar data. And if I now replay the simulation, as the simulation goes by, you will see those individual cells changing colour. And if I zoom in a little bit on the network can we actually see then the response in the network to that rainfall. So I'm going to press the play button and we're going to let the simulation um, tick by. You can see it's going by in five minute intervals. And here we go. As the rainfall travels across the catchment the different cells start to change colour. Um, cells in the light yellow through to light green are relatively low values of rainfall. As we then go from green through to blue and possibly purple and red, then that is much more intense values of uh, rainfall that are occurring as the simulation um, goes through. So we've just seen there uh, a quite intense um, band of rainfall travelling over the catchment. On the catchment itself you can see the 2D zone, you can see the areas of the 2D zone which are experiencing flooding. We've also got some red appearing on the 2D zone and they are velocity arrows which are um, showing the direction of travel of the flows as they pass over the catchment. And we will run through and look at the entire storm that we have up to the very latest item of data from that Nimrod information till eventually we pause the si simulation now uh, at 6 o'clock on the morning after the uh, simulation originally started. So that uh, hopefully gives you a, a nice look at the uh, time series database option that's available for InfoWorks ICM and InfoWorks ICM Live. And in this particular example, we were dealing with spatially varying time series data, which is typically uh, weather, uh, weather radar recording rainfall in grid cells.